How are we doing? Good. Um, so I don't have any injuries to update you on. There's, we're, we're all doing well there. So everybody practiced yesterday, and looks like we'll do the same today. Um, with that, time is yours here. Coach Legere has told us last night he had cleared the concussion protocol. How is he feeling at this point, and how is important is it to have him back in the secondary? Yeah, it's great to have him back. He uh, did uh, get out of the protocol there and pass it, and is doing well. So he uh, he'll be back at working. Andy, we all remember the last time you were in the Super Bowl. Uh, you didn't have most of your starting offensive line, but that was obviously what dictated the game with Patrick running for like 500 yards behind the line of scrimmage. Can you just revisit that offseason, how you rebuilt it to these four new starters that you have and how important that rebuilding of the offensive line has been to you getting here now? Yeah, so the offensive line has done a nice job. We actually have a couple of the guys still remaining from uh, – you know, that team, uh, and then we've added a few in. Uh, Brett Veach made that uh, one of his projects after that Super Bowl and did a nice job of bringing in the new guys. They fit in well and done well. Coach Reed, obviously it's been a long time since you've been back in Arizona. I know you were offensive line coach up at NAU. How has uh, Arizona changed since you've uh, been here, and how does it feel to be back in the Super Bowl here? Yeah, so I stop by periodically because my wife's family is from here. And so we, we drop in every now and again, and the valley has grown. I still remember driving from Los Angeles, and I-10 stopped out by where the stadium is. And you get off and drive through a bunch of fields there and, to get to Glendale. And um, it's grown. I mean, it's grown and grown and grown. Tribute to the politicians in the city that have uh, done a nice job putting it together. And then obviously with Super Bowl events, I mean, I get two weeks between the game, but with the momentum you guys have had, do you feel like you'd like to just play one week after the championship game, keep the momentum going? Uh, no, I mean, I, I think it's good to get the, uh, the rest in, the heel of guys up that were banged up a little bit. And, and then uh, there's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of prep, this type of thing, and the tickets and all of that stuff that the guys have to deal with. So taking a couple of days to get that knocked out, I think, is a good thing. And um, then you're able to prep and get yourself going and try to put out the best product you can. Coach, you mentioned some of the players that practiced yesterday, Kadarius Tony, Juju Smith-Schuster, how they look so far, and then what are you anticipating for them leading up to this game? Yeah, they uh, they practiced yesterday. They'll they'll go again today. They um, they look good, um, and then we'll just we'll we'll see how it goes the rest of the week. I mean, this is uh, just our today will be an easy day, and then we've got three three days that are a little tougher. We'll just see see where they're at. Yesterday we were able to put the pads on and go on pads and get some work done there. The guys hadn't had them on for a week, so. Hey, Coach, can you put into words what Isaiah Pacheco has meant to this team, maybe not even just from an on-the-field standpoint, but his young energy attitude um, on what's primarily a veteran team, what he's brought to you guys? Yeah, I'll tell you that, what you just said. Um, he's got a tremendous amount of energy, loves to play the game. He's smart. We asked the running backs to do quite a bit in the run game and the pass game and protections. So he has handled all that, done it well. Uh, but most of all, he's, he is that energizer bunny guy. I mean, he, he's got endless, endless energy, and you see it when he's on the field playing. You see it at practice. That's who he is. Coach, to your left. Hi, Coach. Uh, you started your head coaching tenure with the Eagles back, and you coached with them for 13 seasons. Is there any special connection with both franchises heading into this game in that you uh, – owe to the state of Philadelphia and their fans as well? Yeah, listen, I, I mean, I had 14 great years there. I loved every minute of it. Um, the, it's a great organization. Um, I still am close with the, the people there. It was great to see the, the kids that we had drafted uh, 
that are now these veteran players, all pro players, and um, on that team, uh, had a chance to give them a hug last night, and 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 now we go our separate ways and we get ready to play. So it's a, uh, um, but I'm proud of them for what they've done. Proud of Howie Roseman for what he's done. <clears throat> he's done a great job of retooling that team a couple different times, and that's not an easy thing to do. Uh, he probably doesn't get enough credit for that. Coach, right over here. Hey, Andy. Um, Hi, Dan. With regarding Clyde, uh, you expecting him to be up Sunday? And if so, what, what are your expectations for him if he does have to play? Yeah, we're just, we'll practice him this week and just see, see where we're at. Uh, Jones has done a good job for us, too. So uh, we'll just see how that all works out. But it's good to have him back, for sure. Coach, with uh, Mahomes, I, I know he battled through the, the high ankle in the AFC title. looked pretty good. Pulled up the, the one time. What has the training staff meant for, for his recovery, and, and how close is he to 100% now? Yeah, so I, I wouldn't tell you he's 100%, but the, the training staff works with him in, endlessly. It's, I guess it would be a tribute to both of them for Pat coming back for more and, uh, and for those guys cranking on him. So uh, Julie spent most of the time with him, uh, uh, rehabbing him, and We've got all the latest, greatest stuff to, to use technology-wise. So um, he's used it all and, and has been able to make, make these jumps here where he can, he can actually function and play in a game, which is pretty remarkable. Andy, back over here. Uh, back to your Eagles connection. Can you appreciate the irony that it's the Eagles that are standing in the way of this team getting another Super Bowl win? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess initially you feel you feel that, uh, or since that, uh, or see it, you're living it. Um, I think it's a great thing for for the Eagles. I think it's great for the Chiefs to be in this position. Once you get through all that, uh, now it's uh, the teams playing each other, and it doesn't really matter the uniform. Uh, it, once you once the game gets going, it's it's football. Who's got the better team, uh, better players, better coaches, and uh, who gets a break here or there? All those things that normally happen in a football game takes place. So you kind of blank all the other stuff out. Not, not too worried about that. You don't let it get in the way of your preparation. Uh, you try to maximize your preparation as you go forward here. So, yeah, but initially, I mean, that's quite a deal. It's a great storyline for you guys. and. I remember the Kelsey brothers, so they'll give you more. So. <laughs> Coach Spag shared with us that he journals and has kept notes of the things that he's experienced through these Super Bowls, and he's been reflecting more on almost the mistakes he's made, the things that he did wrong during a Super Bowl week. For you, is there any one thing that you perhaps did wrong in the, la in the years past that maybe you want to do different, whether that means you individually or as a team? Yeah, so I, I really do that every game. And um, not that I share it here, but I mean, I, I would tell you that every game you're very self-critical and uh, you, you try to make sure that you don't repeat the same mistakes uh, twice, especially in this business. You get fired real quick if you're doing that. So, um, I mean, it's no different for the Super Bowl games. Yeah, there are things you come out and you probably wish you could have done better. Even even the one, you know, the, the one that we won, uh, there were things I felt, ah, you know what, we could do this better than than we did. But I can give you one for your thing. We, we can't have as many penalties as we did the last one. So, that's for sure. Andy, you've relied heavily this year on rookie DBs. You have, of course, Cook as a safety, also the three corners who have played more and more as the year has gone on. What have you seen in their progression that's allowed them to be as competent as, as they've been and as quickly as they've been? Yeah, well, they're, they're willing guys to try things. It's one thing when you have a player that you're coaching and he tries it in practice, but he's not willing to try it in a game. So these guys are very gifted athletes, very talented uh, to start with. Um, and then what you're just trying to do as a coach is give them one more thing to make them greater than what they are or potentially greater than what they are with the young guys. So th these kids have been willing to listen to David and Donald and what they're, what they're teaching, Spags and 
learning, learning his scheme. Um, so my hat goes off to them. They're, they're good kids. They work hard. They want to be good. And every week they've gotten a little bit better, uh, which is, a, again, a tribute to their, to their work ethic. Uh, yeah, right here, Coach Reed. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. Yeah, I know you are. <laughs> yeah, um, could you discuss, uh, you know, moving on from Tyreek Hill and the revamping of your wide receiving core uh, with Marquez, Juju, and uh, Sky Moore and, yeah, you bet. and other guys? Yeah. So, listen, I'm, nobody's happier for Tyreek than, than I am. Uh, I mean, he made a lot of money and he gained a lot of yards. I mean, he had a great year. So, Pro Bowl player, all pro player. Um, but on the other hand, I'm proud of our guys for the job that they've done. Uh, we had a lot of new faces in there. With the exception of McColl, most of the guys were new guys. And I thought they, they stepped up. I, I was really proud of the way Pat and, and Kels brought the guys into the mix and welcomed them in. And, and then uh, worked with them and helped teach them, and and so I, I uh, you know, and listen, Pat Pat Mahomes is a pretty good quarterback, so we didn't lose Pat Mahomes. That was a good thing. <laughs> he uh, yeah. and he makes he makes those guys uh, look good in a lot of ways, and they make him they help make him look good too. So it's a good relationship. Coach over here on the side. Yep. Andy, uh, what made uh, Juju Smith Schuster, an attractive option for you guys, and what has he brought specifically to the Chiefs? Yeah, so I love Juju. G great personality. <clears throat> uh, so that we like that addition that way. Uh, but he also complements Kelsey. He, he has that ability to um, feel in space uh, openings, and Patrick trusts that. He's sure handed. He's great after the catch. He's tough to bring down, and um, and he's smart. I mean, you know, he's, he picked all this stuff up and he did it well. So, got the confidence of the quarterback. That that takes a lot. Andy, over here. Last season, right before you played Philadelphia in the regular season, you had a little bit of a health scare, but you always mentioned over and over how the players kind of help you through that. How the youthful exuberance of the players that you have now, especially a guy like Patrick and some of the other guys. Helped you to get to uh, you get to a point where you're still you know wanting to coach for the next maybe four or five years down the road. Yeah, um, well, that and the doctors they help, but the, those guys their support was great. I mean the players' support. They just told me to get my butt off the ground and keep moving. <laughs> kind of threw back what I throw at them. Uh, but they, they've uh, they, they've been great that way. Uh, they were great during that time. At that moment, they were great. Uh, and then the doctors. Uh, you know, my hat goes off to those guys for the work that they do. Andy, uh, Clark was telling stories this morning about that nine-hour meeting you had with him at the Philly airport before you were hired. I was wondering what your recollections were of that meeting, and uh, were, you, were you ever tempted to tell him, hey, I got this plane waiting for me outside. I need to go. Yeah, um, that, that was, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, that was a long day. And I remember it fairly well. And we, we, he brought the whole organization with him, I felt like. And so I had a chance to meet everybody. Uh, the time flew by. Um, I felt bad about the plane, though. I mean, that was waiting. Uh, I did feel bad about that. But I know everybody involved knows that's part of the business. Um, so and, and things have worked out well for the other teams. We're going to go, we're going to do three more. We're going to go right here. We're going to go to this young lady here. And we're going to finish with this gentleman. Andy, back here. I'm lost. Where is the back right. here? There you go. Uh, around this time last year, you guys brought Matt Nagy back. Why was it important for you to do that? And how have you seen his relationship with Patrick grow this year? Yeah, so Matt knew him before he left, had him for the year. And I knew they had a good relationship then. Um, I felt that that was kind of a no-brainer. I mean, he's a great coach, and um, you know, so bringing him back on staff would would just uh, keep us moving in the right direction, keep Pat moving in the right direction. 
uh, and it's, it's done that. He's been great with Pat, and <clears throat> at the same time, it's tough when you're a head coach and you get, you get released. I mean, he was coach of the year just a couple of years ago, and then end up, ends up uh, things didn't work out and ends up being released. Um, so it's good to knock some of that NFL scar tissue off your head and get, get going again. Um, so he, he's been able to do that. He's in a great place. I'm sure somewhere down the road here he's going to get another opportunity. Um, he's a fine football coach. Yeah.